go live and we are welcome everyone to our success mastermind for monday the first of march 2021 john lavenia here with you february is over is that is that good news or bad how is february everybody we got some some stuff done yes i see a bunch of our a uh, bunch of our friends tuning in here <clears throat> right on time as we as we go live um ace is there or at least there's a ceiling we got adrian garner and evelyn Melendez, John Apoge, great to see you. Agent Jackson's in the house. Allie, look at awesome. As always, Ivier, I am so ready to see your new, your castle. I'm, I'm so ready. So where's the castle shots? We're not seeing it yet. Uh, we got Janet. You're not going to see it. <laughs> no? Oh, still moving in. I'm still unpacking. It. Once I'm unpacked, I, I get it. You'll see it. I, I get it. Yeah, I know what that's like. You know what? And, and, and let me acknowledge everyone else. Who's, who's tuning in right now? The cameras are lighting up. Bing, 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 bing. Welcome, everyone, to our to our new week and our new month. So, Ivie, I'm going to lean on you here just a little bit, okay? So, I know as a person who, I'm going to say I, I can't multitask. Um, I, I, and we've taken this up before where I think multitasking is kind of a misnomer. I think it's just shifting your focus a lot and not getting anything done. I, I, that's how it occurs <laughs> to me. Okay. But I know the last time I moved like into this space right here, which was what you guys, six, seven months ago, right? You used to see a, a different uh, back, uh, backdrop, literal actual backdrop, right? So I don't use a fake one. I suppose I could. And then you wouldn't know where I am. But, uh, but no, seven months ago <laughs> or whatever. And I can't function when I'm thinking, oh, and I still got to do that. Oh, I still got to do that, right? So I appreciate where you're at, Ivie, with, you know what, let me get this set up, right? Because you and I are into aesthetics, many of us here. We like, you know, <laughs> stuff to look orderly, nice, you know, aesthetic. And, uh, and so I'll tell you, the worst part was when I couldn't get the bookshelves up the steps, like physically, I would have to dismantle the house, you know, part of the house to, to move these certain really tall bookshelves I had. There's no way that they can get in just geometrically. So I had to go buy these. And they're not spectacular, but they hold books, you know, but I couldn't go live without, you know, my office set up. Is that your experience, Ivie? Yes. Yes, John. <laughs> right. Yes. So here's the question for you. Question for you. Is it one room and now you're ready to work or is it the whole damn house and now you're ready to work? Which one is it? Well, I've done my bedroom, but I want the whole damn house and then... I'm ready got it. to work. So it's all going to be done by this time tomorrow, latest Wednesday. Bam. There it is. So no multitasking <laughs> for EVA. Focus, focus, focus. Get it done. And then it's done. I love that word. Done. Oh, done. My favorite four-letter word. Okay. All right. Let's... <laughs> Let's get into our topic. And, and you know what, with something like, uh, with something like moving, we have, uh, it's objective, right? It's objects. We can see the stuff and we can put the stuff in the place, right? And then we can evaluate just based on our own personal preferences if we're setting up that space, whether it's a desk, whether it's the, uh, you know, the, the room, um, we, can, we can say that's, that's done to my liking. I may shift it later. Right. Maybe I'll get a, a, a potted plant or something, but good enough to, to call it done for now. And we could look at that objectively, objectively. Um, the other thing about that is that we've got a certain quantity in the case of moving. We've got a quantity of stuff. Now, the last time I moved, in fact, uh, two times ago, when I moved back to Arizona from Utah, uh, my wife and I came here. We had two 26 foot trucks. That's the maximum size you can you can hire or rent, right? From the you know the truck place, uh, without having a you know a CDL, a commercial driver's license, and you know hiring tractor trailers and all this. So we had two of them, full to the top, full to the top. And I'm thinking, all right, that's an interesting quantity of stuff, and and that could be overwhelming. But because it's a known, this is a metaphor by the way for where we're going today but because it's a known amount i can objectively see i can say that that is the top of the truck that is the entirety of the stuff and when the last piece of stuff leaves the truck then we have an empty truck there's nothing vague about that there's nothing subjective about it but <laughs> here's the thing we were just having this conversation with adrian jackson and and adrian garner and um and several others just before we went live what about in business now, most of us uh, who, who engaged in this conversation uh, originally 
uh, under whatever auspices, uh, you know, we found this, uh, came to it through some entrepreneurial endeavor. And in many cases, it has to do with making money online, e-commerce, online business. Okay, we do have a few people here who have uh, indirectly uh, approached that, right? But really our conversation, I think every day lends itself to being more um, self-reliant and entrepreneurial and, and, and productive, right? In fact, I was thinking just, um, just a couple of days ago, I was thinking about, you know, if someone asked me, uh, what do I do? What do I do? Okay, well, I run four businesses and uh, of course I've got books, right? So that makes me an author, right? Uh, I talk a lot, right? So I guess I'm a speaker, right? Um, I do consulting work with a uh, with some companies, right? That that want uh, assistance with getting their customer base up and all this. Um, what else? I've got an e-commerce business of my own, which is very very light. Uh, not a whole lot, to, you know, that I need to do. I'm not into like product sourcing and stuff like that. I know a lot of you are. Uh, and then, uh, and then what else, right? I assist with, uh, you know, my wife's branding and, and uh, marketing agency, right? So I've got my hands in a lot of different stuff. And I'm thinking, what, what is it that over, you know, overshadows all of that? Like if I had to boil it down to one thing and the word productivity came up for me, productivity coach. Okay. I guess that, that could work, right? People got a lot of different uh, ideas about what that is. And so, um, cause it's not just to one end. I don't, just looking at myself now, right? And trying to simplify down, what do you do? And I guess the corollary question to that is who do you serve? Who do you serve, right? Who's that, that ideal customer, right? Who's that person that in your business, I'm asking you to ask yourself this right now, who, who is the ideal, what's been called customer avatar, the ICA, the ideal customer avatar? Oh, well, um, you know, his name's uh, Bob and he's 42 years old. He's got two kids, he's married, right? So I'm just making this up as I go, but actually, you know, name the guy or the gal, right? To have this one ideal avatar, right? And of course, there's there's more than one of them on the planet, okay? But but we're attempting to serve, uh, not being vanilla. If you're vanilla, you're ignored. But attempting to serve a specific target audience for your product, your service, whatever your offer is. Here's the the rub, I think. And this is what uh, I was hearing right out of the mouth of my good friend, Adrian Jackson. I'm so glad you're here, brother. And Adrian's productive, right? So here I am calling myself a productivity coach. Adrian is productive to the degree that he has attracted the attention of other people who want to be productive. Oh, Adrian, you, you uh, produced these uh, statistics, right? You've sold items on you know the interwebs and you're doing it. <laughs> Yay, right? So... So what's special about that? What's special? What's special about that is that in the case of, uh, of Adrian, right, just getting some stuff done, he did it in the face of, and it wasn't just him, but he did it in the face of uh, lots of unknowns and complications. Unknown meaning, I don't know the size of that truck, right? I don't know if I'm done unloading the truck yet. I don't know if I've got all the parts that I need. Uh, unknown quantities of potential overwhelm. And I asked just before we went live, so for those of you who are not uh, here in the group with us live, uh, seeing a recording or what have you, I asked how many of you who, who approached this conversation, this, this mastermind, this, uh, this idea of being, doing, and having more via personal development, via the application of, of you know, principles that work in life, how many of you are, are underwhelmed with the amount of complications? Like, I'm, I am so bored. I need more complications, please. Please sign me up for more moving parts, more stuff, because I am bored. Nobody, <laughs> no hands went up, right? So if we had to kind of pick a direction to go in, do we want more whelm or less whelm? You see, we gotta, we gotta come down to the correct amount of whelm. Overwhelm, not good. Underwhelm, not good. The correct amount of, of whelm. <laughs> I don't think whelm is a word, but um, it's kind of like uh, gruntle. Is gruntle a word? I know people are disgruntled, but is there anyone who's gruntled? I don't know. Um, but anyway, overwhelm, underwhelm, the correct amount of whelm. The correct amount of, uh, I could say, uh, randomness in our life. Uh, a boring life would be, um, I'm underwhelmed, I'm bored, uh, nothing, nothing, right? 
boring. Okay, so that would be short-lived because you would go invent problems for yourself. You'd go on an adventure. You would go do something. And then the other side of that overwhelm is I got I to gotta get things in order. I'm in a, a confusion. And I got all these moving parts. So what's the answer to get to the proper amount of whelm in our life, the, the proper amount of randomness, problem solving, and yes, productivity, because we're taking things to a done. We're not just sitting there with, with particles flying around our head like a tornado, and, and there's nothing stable about that. Well, in the words that I just said, I just heard the answer, stable. Stability. We got to find in our lives, I'm speaking to myself, okay, uh, I've got to find something where I can, I could say that's the rock that I'm building on. That's the rock. And then I've got these things here, which are kind of underwhelming, and I could say are on autopilot, right? There's not much for me to do there. Uh, and thank goodness for that, because then that allows me to put my attention on these other things, which are spinning really fast and, and do require more of my attention because I've, I've chosen, I've chosen to put them on the truck, right? Nobody held a gun to my set. And now, John, you must engage in such and such. I'll tell you what, it, what it's been for me. It's been uh, social media, marketing and promotions, things like that. I am not, that is not my strong suit. Nope, 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 nope. For me, overwhelm, confusion. 10 million possibilities, an unknown quantity of particles that I could arrange into some order and that I've begun uh, doing. But as long as I've practiced um, avoidance of that or, or uh, basically um, said, you know what, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to do it without that piece. It's like, kind of like if you're doing like Amazon business, right? Can you do Amazon without product sourcing? Think of it like that. Can you, can you be in the, in the coaching and, and, you know, online digital products uh, world without, you know, some aspect, some degree of uh, digital marketing through, through social media modalities? Probably not, right? Now you can hire it out. You can hire out your product sourcing. How many of you hired out your product sourcing? Those of you engaged in, in that sort of, uh, you know, e-commerce? Probably none of you, right? Because you're the decision maker. You're the CEO at the helm of this, of this business, this enterprise that you're looking to put out value into the marketplace via, right? So there's only some things that you can outsource and some things that you're going to, you're going to want to make those decisions because they can make you a lot of money and they can lose you a lot of money, right? So that's something you hopefully trust yourself with. So there's, I think the, the main consideration is, do I trust myself to engage in these things that are necessary in this case, random, flying around my head, do I trust myself enough to make good decisions about how to put this stuff in order? Uh, and, you know, that's, that's a really interesting question. The, the only way that I can trust myself would be is if, if I actually put some attention on the expert, you know, the best practices, you know, how does this stuff work? Now, of course, in the case of, of social media, there's a million gurus who aren't, okay? But can I see good counsel, good uh, knowledge, a good foundation, a good rock that I can build on. I could start saying, all right, this one goes here. This one goes here. It's like putting together a puzzle, any puzzle. When you take it out and I'm going to uh, nod to, to Julia, uh, Tuzel, anyone who's in interested in putting together puzzle, puzzles, objective puzzles, right? Like objects. So actual jigsaw puzzles, check out uh, Tuzel toys. And we've got that on our, um, in our Facebook group. You're going to be seeing more about that. We do puzzles all the time here in our house, keeps the mind you know, it's, it's fun. And at the same time, it's a nice reprieve, you know, from all the, all the other subjective stuff we do, right? It's still, you know, it's like, look at that piece, look at those colors. But, um, but can you, can you start to gain knowledge? Here's the metaphor. Can you start to gain knowledge from people who know what they're doing? Which I think is the whole point of this mastermind group, right? Adrian Garner said just before we went live, this has become like a, a repository of gold, right? There's so much, look at where we started for those of us who, who engaged in this conversation six months ago, right? And look at how much more you know now. Uh, enormous, enormous, like no comparison. And if you're new here and you're thinking, wow, I need to get up to speed. Well, again, which, which things are you going to take on? Because again, a lot of the stuff we talk about is, is based on principle, which is unchanging. There it is. There's the key. There's how I get the correct amount of whelm in my life. There's how I get a stable foundation upon which I can build things that right now can seem random. And it always, for me, 
This is right out of the book that we just recently finished, Steve Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Okay, we, we base our life decisions, our roles and our goals on principles. Principles are higher than personalities and preferences and all the other P's, right? So here's the principle. And that we can allow to, to define us. I was just having a conversation just before I came upstairs into my office uh, with my daughter's uh, tutor. Uh, who's an awesome lady, and she's also into the coaching space. And we were talking about um, people who identify my identity, okay, identify with or as my problems, my challenges, my crises. We can find them on social media too, right? Oh, I'm, I'm so downtrodden. Oh, I'm a victim. Oh, I've got problems. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But to continue to validate that or to seek validation through that, what we validate expands, right? What we put our attention on becomes more real for us. Somebody keeps looking in the mud. They keep thinking mud, mud, mud. They get more mud. So we must not, I, I would urge you, we must not identify with or as our problems. These are random particles floating through the air, which we can create order out of if we are standing on principle. If we were like, all right, well, who am I in the, in the, in the face of all that? Who's showing up? to create order out of this, this randomity, this chaos. Who is it? Well, that's, that's a prin principle-based question. And that's why character beats personality, right? Principles before personalities. When we look at this, uh, you know, this um, effort that we're considering putting in and that many of us have been putting in to whatever end, e-commerce, network marketing, uh, uh, writing books, right? Coaching. We look at this, who's showing up to do the job. And you might be thinking right now, because you've heard me say this a thousand times, more important than what you do is who's doing it. Yeah, John, we've heard it before. Okay. But for me, it's a constant reminder, constant. Why do we do our, our daily meditation? Assuming you do such things, our daily study to, to feed our mind with, with good stuff, right? To load our guns, so to speak. Uh, exercise for that matter, more objective, right? Not, not a whole lot to evaluate there other than did you do it or did you not do it, right? Did you, did you uh, use the body, right? You use it or lose it. Same thing with our, you know, our mind, our ability to think, same thing with our principles. Use it or lose it. Either stand for something or you fall for anything. So then the question then, that I, and the topic I guess that we're talking about here today <coughs> is, are your principles, are you solid in your principles to the point where you identify with them and as them rather, <laughs> rather than the circumstances, which may be overwhelming or underwhelming? But besides the circumstances, can we say, this is who I am, this is how I'm showing up. And now, can you see how that could bring you back to the correct amount of whelm? If you're underwhelmed, you could start taking on more projects, right? You could find ways to innovate. Right. You can add random stuff to that. Make experiments. Right. And if you're overwhelmed, you could say, look, I'm going to pick out these things. I mentioned Adrian Jackson before. I'm going to pick out these things. And I'm going to take them to a done. Right. Because I know that that part of the, the principles that, that define who I am, I'm someone who gets stuff done. Well, that's that's very good. Right. So you're you're someone who I would call that excellence. What is excellence? But commitment to completion. If the anatomy of success itself is completing what you start, well, then great. Uh, so you decided, right? You're in that game now. Again, nobody held a gun to your head. You, you decided to be in that game. What can you finish? What can you take to a done within that game? And now you've got one group of particles here that you've put on top of the rock of I'm someone who gets stuff done. Is that who you are? Fantastic. Fantastic. Contrast that with I'm someone who's in a, a chronic state of, of panic and crisis management, and I'm identified by my problems. Huge difference. Same exact circumstances, by the way. Right? Did anyone come in here and get get the easy ride? Did anyone get the easy button for whatever for whatever enterprise you're engaged in? Unfair advantage, and I love that that term, unfair advantage. I like to help people create unfair advantages, but those unfair advantages are all right here. None of it has to do with circumstance. Do you think I can control that? Look, if I could control circumstances to be advantageous or not, do you think my wife would have gotten cancer? Right? So how much, 
how much control do we have over these particles that are flying around in the air? But what did James Allen say in his classic book, As a Man Thinketh? Man cannot control his circumstances, but he can control his thoughts and therefore indirectly, but surely shape his circumstances. Indirectly, but surely. Surely meaning, I'm sure, not surely the, the girl from, what was that uh, TV show back in the 1970s? Was Shirley? Oh, I can't remember the name. Laverne and Shirley. Uh, oh, not one, but what was the one with the with Roger, Raj, and then Cheryl? She always had the pick in her hair, Cheryl. Uh, good times or something, or uh, was that it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and a rerun. Hey, 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 rerun. <laughs> Man, TV used to be good. Um, okay, I'm completely afield of what I was talking about now. Let me. Let me present that to you and see where we go with this. Um, are we identified by our principles or by our problems? And I think that will reveal how, how able we are to bring our life into the correct amount of whelm. <laughs> I guess that'll be the topic for today. The correct amount of whelm. Uh, we can go ahead and raise hands. We can do what we want here. I see some awesome people here with us right now. And I'm very interested to hear your feedback on this because uh, again, I'm impressed with people who are able, uh, like I mentioned, Adrian Jackson. That's just one example. We've got lots of impressive people here who are able to take out of all this, these possibilities, here's something and look at just, I've got fruit on the tree now, right? It may not be this huge watermelon or something, but there's fruit on the tree. Koyla Drake is with us, ladies and gentlemen. Koyla off the coast of Scotland. Hi, Koyla. Hello. And I'm very sorry I haven't been here for a while, but uh, my life has been rather full. Ah. And uh, it's likely to be like that for a while. Um, so underwhelm and overwhelm. I don't think I've suffered from underwhelm for a considerable period. And I would say about overwhelm, it's something I've always put myself through. And um, I think that the times that I grow are the times I'm trying to cope with more than I probably really can. And, um, you know, and you force yourself to do it. You have to, you have to, you have, to, if you, if you're not going to, you either have to cope or you're going to give up. So giving up is not really an option. So coping is better. Uh, and I find that the, the most growth and development that I've done has been the times of greatest challenge, basically. Mm -hmm. So I dare say that's probably like that for quite a lot of people, if not all people. I think some people maybe can't cope with overwhelm, but I think if you're going to grow, you have to challenge yourself. And that is where where that comes in. Um, so I'm now um, in another election, which is why I haven't been around and working and etc. So I'm the um, Highlands and Islands list candidate for the Scottish election, and I'm the uh, Orkney Islands candidate for the Scottish election. And I shan't get elected, but it's going to be hard work and there'll be a lot of stuff done and I'm going to learn a lot from it. And it'll be overwhelming because uh, mm -hmm. it's been overwhelming every time, but each time I learn a little bit more. So, yeah, it's it's all good. And coincidentally, whilst all of this has been going on, my product that has been stuck forever uh, has started to shift. So um, the I sent it to a packaging company and I have not been able to get them to reply to me. And all of a sudden, a couple of days ago, they came back online. It didn't matter what I did. I just couldn't get any reply from them. So now it's on the move um, and it looks like it might actually make it to Amazon eventually. <laughs> so that's going to happen at the same time. Hey ho. And that's uh, my listing is going to be, I've got wonderful pictures from Wayne. Thank you, Wayne, wherever you are. And um, my listing I wrote quite a while ago, but I haven't had a chance to do anything to it. So that's going to be imperfect and done mm -hmm. rather than perfect and not done and that's just how it's going to be and I might need to speak to Neil about PP um, whatever it's called the the paper click PPC yeah. so that's fine and the last thing I'd like to say is the other day I found a really good app now I haven't used this for very long so it's not a terribly informed um, recommendation but it, and it's for the girls amongst us there's a, an app called Her Spirit 
And I know that quite a lot of people on here are now into fitness and upping their game with that uh, in, in mind. So her spirit is about increasing your activity and working on your mindset and your diet and everything else. Um, so I'd kind of recommend that. That's not as, a, an, as well as everything we do with everything else, um, but it seems to be very supportive of females. And I think that's a terribly good thing because I think sometimes we need that. And that's me. Thank you, Carla. So, so <laughs> many uh, great insights right there. I was thinking about the, um, your endeavor into elections and, and uh, all this and how that's uh, a very foreign area compared to other things that we're engaged in. Uh, it's actually an area of interest to me uh, as of late. And uh, not, not because of any, of any um, you know, delight that I have in the idea of politics, but um, duty really more, more than anything. And I, I um, in service, right? That, that whole, I guess, statesmanship kind of approach. Uh, but, and it's the, the big but, right? There's so much I don't know about that. I mean, everybody's got an opinion, right? Uh, but what does it really take to be able to deliver in that space? It's a huge amount of randomness right there that, that, uh, that I'm considering uh, confronting. Uh, that being said, you've got, uh, you've got things that are in order. Apparently these products are gonna actually hit Amazon. Oh my goodness, imagine that. Uh, and then of course the, the um, you know, the, with the fitness, I, uh, are you aware, Koyla, of um, uh, Strava and the walking club that Star began? Yes, I've, I've seen that and I'm on Strava, but I haven't actually used it for a while because my watch stopped working. So I'm intending ah. to go back onto that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the, the Her Spirit thing is, is, is a, an adjunct to that. It's not an right. instead of. So that's kind of why I suggested it because I think it was Star who started that off was it right yes um so yeah and i think it's a really good supportive app as far as i have seen you'll people will have to go and have a look and see for themselves because i've only been looking at it for a day or two but there's a lot of content there and it isn't free but it's not expensive either right you can so, look at it for free right so so these are so these are what i would say an idea whose time has come right let's get our body in shape and all this uh, it's not necessarily a new idea, but there are new tools to assist us in creating order in that space. So, you know, anytime, and uh, thank you, Koyla, thank you so much for your share. Uh, anytime I have found myself back to the idea of overwhelm, not knowing what to get done, it, it also comes down to my, you know, the dread of my existence, which is indecision, not knowing what to do, or, or you know, not, not deciding what to do. Uh, indecision, all that, all that overwhelm, all that lost time, right? And that typically comes from a lack of confidence, lack of certainty, and which is also based on what? A lack of knowledge, certainty, knowledge, those things kind of go together, right? So what, and anything we can do to create order in our mind and therefore in our actions, we're going to find ourselves getting things done, not necessarily perfectly. We still need the potted plant in the corner of the room. I understand, okay, but now We've got order. Now we've got some things done. We could start to work. Thank you again, Coyla. Great reminders. Um, who's next? Let's uh, let's hear a couple other thoughts on this. We've got Adrian. What's up, Adrian? Come on down. Hi, everybody. I love talking on this when I'm on. But um, yeah, talking about this earlier on about uh, starting off something and continuing along that line. Uh, yes, you do get ups and downs. You get a lot more downs than you do get up. But it's like walking along a road and you see a wall. You want to get around that wall. So once you get around that wall, you've got the next wall. But as you get on top of your things and you get more organized and more know how you do things, then walls get further and further and further away. You will still hit them but you won't hit them as much as you did at the start. But yeah, when I first came, when I first started this, it looked so easy. It did look so easy. Now, yeah, let's get some stuff, put an Amazon, be dead easy until you hit the first wall and the next wall and the next wall and so on and so on and so on. But I put a lot of work in the start of this when I first started. So I got to that top of that hill and I'm still at the top of the hill. 
don't get me wrong, I go down a little bit, but then I get back up again. It's all a, all about perseverance. Don't let anything um, go, get in your way. Don't let any problem solve it. You can do it. You can get beyond that. You can get to where you want to go. And I believe all of us on here has got the ability to do that. You just need believe. Believe you can do it and you will achieve it. And mm. good luck, Koala. And I'm sure you do well in your council. Thank you, Adrian. And thank you for being a great example uh, for other aspiring entrepreneurs, people who are looking to, to put some fruit on the tree. And look, today alone, right, we have the opportunity to advance uh, for those engaged in uh, you know, e-commerce, right? We do have our e-commerce work group with Evelyn Melendez at 3 p.m. Eastern U.S. time, right? So, so where Adrian's talking about you can, yes, you can, and you can more readily alongside others who, who can, right? And who are, and who are doing. So you don't have to go it alone. And that right there, I would call an unfair advantage. Unfair, right? How many solopreneurs are there who are staring at a computer screen or like people who want to get into the publishing space and authoring books and whatever, they're st staring at that, that blinking cursor of death and they don't know what to say, right? So that's, a, that's what it looks like when you go it alone. Even myself, right? Uh, people say, "Well, how, where do you get all these these ideas?" I say, "Well, I didn't originate, you know, the words or anything. You know, this was, you know, I, I've read a, a few books. Uh, you know, um, what you put in is what comes out, and see what works in our life, and then you know, and then and then outflow it. You inflow, you outflow." Thank you again, Adrian. All right, uh, who else wants to share with us today about the correct amount of whelm? and what you can do to induce such order and productivity in your life. You know, there is a saying where there are no oxen, the stable is clean. I know I'm paraphrasing that. Uh, it's a proverb, the proverbial, right? That was Solomon who said that, right? Where, where there are no oxen, the stable is clean. That would be an underwhelming kind of condition, right? Well, how about what happens when we actually produce something, right? How do we keep our stable clean? Adrian Garner, look at that double shot of Adrian's today. Hey, John, yeah, you're in for trouble. You're in for trouble. Um, yes, I mean, I've had a lot of questions from people and I think some people are risking not even getting to the question, am I overwhelmed or underwhelmed because they're not daring to try. And I'm looking at people and talking to people who I know can do things perfectly well, but they, as somebody's just said, don't always believe it. So don't hesitate to try and ask the question and try it because that's the only way you're going to answer it. Get, get to the overwhelmed state, give it a go. You know, what have we got to lose really? As long as you're measuring what you're putting on the line and it's money you can afford to risk, take it in small chunks, trial and error, you know, then you'll find out what overwhelm and underwhelm looks like. But I think there's a, there's a fear factor that I'm seeing from people and they're thinking they don't have the knowledge when They've got a lot of knowledge. Maybe organizing it takes a chat with a few people in the group to say, hey, how do I go about this? They've got the knowledge. They've got the skill. So try and get to the question. You know, ask yourself, am I overwhelmed or underwhelmed after you've actually had a go? That's what I would say. Adrian, you just brought up a huge point. And that is, that is one's risk tolerance. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, so completely different field, all right, which is trading. Uh, intraday trading and swing trading and all this where we're taking money and we're buying and selling assets. And we're doing that uh, again in a, in a solopreneur kind of a condition, right? You're looking at the chart, you're making decisions based on technical analysis. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this space. I'm rather familiar with it. You can make a lot of money really fast and you can lose a lot of money really fast, right? So uh, when, when you're new in that space, and even when you're not new, you can engage in what's called a demo account or a simulated paper trading. So it's all the same technology. It's all the same stuff. It's just not real money, right? All right, how much money would you like to start in in this fake account? Oh, I'll take $50,000. Okay, great. So here's a $50,000 account, right? All right, we're going long. We're going short. Here we go. Oh, you won, you lost, you won, you lost, right? And so that can be a bit thrilling, especially when you hit your stride, you start seeing, oh, the technicals, I like that, there's my advantage, right? I'm gonna enter this trade at that spot. Okay, great, great, you're feeling good, right? All right, now, real money. 
Here's the real money account. It's your money. Start. <gasps> right? So <laughs> a guy named Mark Douglas wrote probably the best book ever uh, on, on the psychology of this. Uh, it's called uh, Trading in the Zone. Trading in the Zone. Um, I see a couple other hands up. Evelyn, we're going to get to you. And then I saw another hand went up and then went back down. But uh, the, the premise of that book was, was non-attachment. It, it was, you know, once you've, you've decided on your technicals, you've got your strategy, put on the trade and don't just sit there rethinking it. And what if, what if, no, no, no. Okay. So you got to get to the point where you're just a machine with this stuff. Uh, so I guess right there, we can look at, I've got all the knowledge, right? I've simulated, I've done the Amazon product sourcing. Here's the Helium 10, here's 10,000 inputs, inputs, inputs. Now it's time for me to output. And the point that Adrian just brought up, wow, wow. So you can, we could be sitting there with a head full of, of how to, and yet the emotions of it could trip yep. us up. Yeah. Yeah, John, I would just say, I mean, I'd urge everyone to have a go. I think probably a lot of you've got to the point where you could have a go but you're hesitating, just mm -hmm. reach out to people in the group who've done it, talk. And it's that organization. How do I organize all this? How do I actually get through this forest of information and get through to the other side? There's a lot of people know how to do it now mm -hmm. in the group or mm -hmm. know about other aspects of business in the group that you may be in doubt on. And somebody's just been mentioned to be cash flow again. We'll go back over all these things. We'll talk mm -hmm. about them. So it's all there. As we said, it's a repository of gold in this, in this group. There's knowledge everywhere. You, can, you can't move for tripping over it. So have a go. Just have a go. Set your risk parameter and then have a go. Mess up the first product, whatever it is, but just try it. And then you'll be able to measure how it feels, the underwhelm, the overwhelm, and everything you're talking about, John. And Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's exactly what like Adrian Jackson did, right? Here's $100 or 200 pounds or whatever, and maybe we win, maybe we lose. He had like five winners. Right, little winner, little wins, okay. But now we could scale up from something, right? We can't st scale up, uh, you know, a zero. Can awesome I come stuff. back on that, John, just very yeah. briefly? Yeah, when we first heard Adrian talking and we were all trying to follow this rigid course, you know, we think, oh my gosh, Adrian, don't do it, don't do it. You're not following the course. But he just blasted through it and did it anyway, his way, you see. So there's information and there are barriers that could arise from that information alone because we're trying to follow a rigid track that's been imposed on us perhaps by the course or some, something else. Mm -hmm. There's a time at which you've just got to try it. Use that's the what knowledge. That's Adrian. what Adrian did. That's what Adrian just did, isn't that, it? Adrian. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, you would, the blue sky is a foundation. It's your settings. You go the way you want to go, the, the way you feel the way is better. Not the, the right way is not always the wrong way. The right way can be the right way. The right way can be the wrong way but you will not learn it until you get there. Once you get there, you know what to expect. Next hurdle. Yeah, I know that. I want to make that same mistake twice, but I used the blue sky as a foundation. I didn't follow it solely. I found my own little, own little way of doing things and other people find their way of doing things, but it's get the, the same goal is for everybody. We want to be successful. No matter which way you go, which you feel comfortable that's where you go. And that's how I did it. Beautiful stuff. Thank you, guys. You're reminding me of art class. Art class. All right. So here's how you hold the brush. Okay. Now what do you do with it? Well, yeah. Uh, so there's a bit of art and science, I think, with this. Thank you, guys. Evelyn. Uh, and then we're going to have Virginia. So Evelyn Melendez, I'm going to ask you to, uh, I got to run. I'll be right back in two minutes. So go ahead and take over for a moment. Oh, so absolutely. So um, both of you, Adrians, you're right on spot. Um, I love what, everything that we were, this is like a follow-up of what we were discussing before we got to the recording part of this call. But I think that comfort zone is dangerous. I don't like to be underwhelmed. I kind of thrive being overwhelmed. I'm like Emma, I like a challenge. I like to push myself, you know, my boundaries. How far can I go? How high can I go in my sales or whatever it is that we're doing? Either it is a career, you know, your job, or it is in your sales. But I think that what is stopping all of us, you guys, is fear. Is the fear of change. We are overanalyzing everything. 
So I have put a little challenge on the Facebook group and it says, do you wanna be comfortable or do you want to grow? Because you cannot do both. So that's my challenge to you guys. I hope you guys are gonna go into the Facebook group and tell me what is it that you wanna do. And just to reiterate, we're here to help each other out, you guys, all of us. If Adrian had not pushed me out of my comfort zone, I will probably still be biting my nails and freaking out where am I going to have my next income coming from? You know, Adrian, Jay, I've learned from you. You have no idea. Every time you shared something and how your sales were going, I'm like, if Adrian can do this, so can I. So can I. Every time each and every one of you guys have shared your success stories, it has pushed me further. It gives me the excitement and and they want to do better. And because I have learned so much is, you know, that I am always here to help you guys out, you know, is we can't live in fear. We can't. We got to give it a shot. We got to give it a, a chance. So please answer to my question on Facebook. Do you want to be comfortable or do you want to grow? Because you cannot do both. Wow. Great insights, Evelyn. Thank you. So much. And of course, Evelyn hosts our, uh, our e-commerce work group in a couple hours. So uh, more gold will be deposited into the repository in just a couple sure. hours. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Guess who else is here? Can you guess? Virginia Pipitone. Hi, Virginia. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, it's my birthday, so I'm- Woo, the birthday girl, yay! March 1st, yay. yes. Um, and I got a phone call from my sister in Florida this morning. She said, I didn't mail your card yet, but that's what happens finds when you're born on the first day of the month. By the time the month gets here, everyone's late. <laughs> they, know, they know my birthday's in March, but they just don't know when. So they're like, okay. I, my comment today, though, is about, I want to share that I did order the book. Where are you, Glenn? You were on my page earlier. There you are, Glenn. The Go For No. Remember, you, you did that a couple weeks ago. It's, it's only really like about 75 pages. It's very, very short. And it talks about failure and becoming a, failing being different than becoming a failure. And um, those are two very different things on page 32. And um, it's, it's, it's a cute story. It really is because this gentleman meets, he kind of like falls out of bed and he lands in an alternate parallel universe and he meets himself 10 years down the road, only he meets a more successful version of himself and they get together and they're trying to no, figure wait, out. Wait, wait, Virginia, don't tell them too much. They got to go buy the book and read it. <laughs> but, but so it's interesting how one had this really successful latter part of their life and the other one's like still struggling. So he makes him say, repeat after me. Um, I like to fail. And he goes, but I don't like to fail. <gasps> That's my problem. And then he says, but I, there's a difference between failing and becoming a failure. And so he makes him repeat. I like to fail. I fail big and I fail often. <laughs> Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but no can never hurt me. So the more no's you get, the more yeses you'll get. Because we have a tendency, he gave an example of the guy has to make a quota of four sales for the week and he makes three of them on Monday. So he slacks off the rest of the week. And the next thing you know, he's not getting that fourth sale uh, because he did not, his goal was to get four yeses and he got three Whereas if his goal had been to get 16 no's because he needs to hit 20 people a week, um, he would have kept working on Monday instead of stopped and taken the rest of the week off. And so I found that to be very interesting is to continue um, failing, fail big, fail often. He also goes into five failure levels and how we all like start out on a basic level and then how some of us progress into failing more and failing more until we are the top salesperson in the company, you know, the top salesperson in the region because you have failed so often um, that you are now succeeding because you keep going and going and going, getting more no's and getting more no's. So that's just a very, that's a very good thing. And that's something that keeps me moving forward. And that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, Virginia. Mark and everyone else are wishing you a happy birthday. Mark is assuming you're now 29. 
So that just happened. There you go. 39. <laughs> we love you, my friend. So glad you're here. We're going to get, uh, get Stefan out here in a moment. And I'm thinking about how what, um, what Virginia was just sharing correlated with what Adrian Garner was saying about the, the risk tolerance, the emotion behind it, what I was saying about like trading, right? It's one thing to look at the chart. It's another thing to look at it with real money that you're about to risk, right? So that emotion can trump all of the, the logic if we allow it. Stefan, what do you think, sir? Welcome to the call. Stefan. Hey, I was just turning the microphone. Sorry about that. Um, happy birthday, by the way. Um, it's, it's a good topic that you're bringing up because it's actually something that um, wh when I used to be, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of things like right off the bat that would scare me and I would look forward to it because I look forward to the excitement to it. I still do it, but it takes more coaxing from myself nowadays than it used to because of the amount of times I've gotten burned. Um, I'm not like jaded or anything, but I'm more cautious. So sometimes I have to like override that, which is annoying. So like, for example, like with the Melaleuca thing, because I did it once before signing up for that was kind of scared the crap out of me. I'm not going to lie. Um, just because I, I don't know, it just does. So it, it's kind of interesting. Like your risk tolerance changes as the days go, as your life goes on, depending on what happens. And, uh, some days it's like tolerance is very high other days, not at all. So I don't really know the rhyme or reasons. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, it's a great um, barometer, right? So we're talking about emotions right now. I mean, the whole idea of overwhelm and underwhelm are completely subjective, right? So yes. no matter what the circumstances are that we're choosing for ourselves, and it could be the same exact circumstances that another person has chosen, but our experience of it can be totally different. So then what is, back to the, the you know, what I think is the most important question, who's doing it, right? So who's doing it? All right. And what allows me or, or refuses me the ability to get into the flow with whatever I'm choosing, whatever path I'm choosing to, to pursue. Um, I, I will tell you that, that for, for most people that I've confronted and that I've worked with and mentored through the years, entrepreneurs, people who want to succeed in whatever the business is, Amazon, other home businesses, uh, running a, a, a corporation, you know, uh, my wife, Shannon, she, she consults with like, CEOs and everything. I mean, they do the big thing. So, so it's all people though. It's always, always, always. And a lot of people miss, you know, they miss this, especially if they're like in B2B sales, they think I got to sell such and such corporation. No, no people buy from people. So you're dealing with a decision maker, hopefully, right? You're link, dealing with a decision maker who's a person who has their wants and needs and has their own subjective reality about these same circumstances. And that's why I think, Stefan and everyone, that's why I think um, meditation and study is so important. I think if I, if I can't get to a quiet space, like just starting my day with, with just a blank piece of paper, then what am I actually doing? I'm, I'm taking that paintbrush and I'm attempting to paint on a canvas, which is already all marked up with all my crap, man. This is my history. Look, I got, I got problems, man. I got thoughts, right? Um, here's what I think and here's what I've experienced. And, and yeah, there's, there's a place for, you know, mental faculties like reason and memory. I mean, that's good, but sometimes we need to develop a forgettery to go along with our memory. That's not a real word, but, you know, uh, actually got that from the late Wayne Dyer, Wayne Dyer. It's the first guy I ever heard use the word forgettery. <laughs> so, so can we click the reset button and say, regardless of whatever these circumstances are, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to look at them as objectively as I can with that blank slate because yesterday carries no precedence, just like the trading world, right? We, Adrian and I were just talking about trading, right? So here's, I'm going to put on a trade. I'm going to go along on this futures contract. Okay. Fantastic. But the last trade, whether it was long or short, whether it won or lost has exactly zero bearing on me putting on this trade right now it means nothing. <laughs> so it's almost like it, in that space anyway it would force us to hit the reset button like everything that happened up to this exact moment completely irrelevant okay we're talking about futures now in fact this is 
I would say uh, a way to, to sort of accelerate our own um, sanity, really. I mean, you think about the, the most successful, sane and productive people, they spend most of their time contemplating the past, the present or the future. The future, aha. So, so I am creating now, I'm creating based on my considerations about the future. I'm contemplating what could be and I'm gonna work with what is, but the past, oh my goodness. In contrast, I mean, are most people outrageously successful or not? Not, right? So most people in contrast are contemplating the past. The past, the past, the past. So that's why I think it's so, it's so important to get back to zero, right? A blank piece of paper and, and say, all right, what am I painting today? Decide, and hopefully you do decide. Otherwise you sit there and you don't decide. And then it's really easy to say, well, what did I do yesterday? That's easy. Right. Oh, I could just look back at what I did yesterday. Let me be that guy again. And maybe that's pleasing for you. And maybe it's not. Um, wow. Huge, huge insights. Thank you, Stefan. Thanks. Kim, you're going to you're going to take us home today, Kim. We got nine minutes left. Let's have Kim come out here and tell us something really profound now. Kim Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Um, Virginia, happy birthday. Spoke with you earlier, didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Um, this is a great topic um, for me, especially. Overwhelm is a word that I tend to use quite often. So this has been good insight. And um, But I guess what I really wanted to know was, what does overwhelm mean? So I looked that up and some of the definitions are to cover completely, to overcome by superior force, or to, to defeat completely. So I guess what I take away from this today is I think I want to remove overwhelm from my vocabulary because I don't want to be defeated completely, right? I want to pursue this to the fullest degree that I can, and I want to be successful. You know, I am like uh, Evelyn, you know, I am, you know, I'm very competitive and I, I want to, you know, raise that bar and I want to strive further and farther and higher. And um, so, you know, I think that overwhelm is something that's not going to go away. You know, it will always be there, but how do we, how do we process that? And what's really staring me in the face right now as I, I speak about this is, and I think Glenn or somebody said this, but I, put this post-it note along with my other post-it notes, but no intelligent action comes from a fearful mind. So I don't know where that came from, but I, I think Glenn said it recently. Okay, well, there you go. And so that to me is, you know, I guess for, for my me, I don't know about the rest of you, but for me, when I get to that place of overwhelm, my mind is very fearful. It's fearful of, well, what about this? And what about that? You know, I remember trying to reach out to my supplier the first time. And thinking, oh my God, I, I don't want to do that. How do I, I don't even know how to speak to these people. What do I say to them? You know, so, you know, I guess that's really in the forefront of my mind is, you know, are you going to make that intelligent decision? Are you going to push that fear aside and say, you know, I'm not going to allow the overwhelm to control what I do. I'm going to make an intelligent decision, know what I need to do and know how I need to do it. And I'm going to take that step forward and do it. And like Virginia said, even if I fail, well, you know what? Okay, whoop de do. So you know what? I learned something from it. I'm going to fail forward. Um, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> my final thought is, Adrian said something about um, we're armed with knowledge. And so what rose up when I read that was um, a friend of mine said to me one time, she said, those that are forewarned are forearmed. And so that is, you know, that's really powerful. So when we see what others in this group have gone through, how they've persevered or what they had, what challenges they've, you know, faced with their Amazon business or whatever business, you know, we can help one another because we can see, oh, you know, so-and-so had an issue with their supplier or so-and-so had an issue with getting the product into Amazon or the 3PL. And so that helps us to um, say, okay, you know what, I'm for, I, I, I've been forewarned. I know that this could happen. So I'm ready. If that comes my way, I'm ready for that. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Good. You know what? Um, you forced me to pull out my dictionary because oh. you're looking up <laughs> words. And I just looked up a word and I gave everyone earlier, I gave you a piece of false data. I told you that whelm isn't a word and it is whelm. 
Verb, engulf, submerge, or bury some, someone or something. A swimmer whelmed in a raging storm. Or with no object, flow or heap up abundantly. The brook whelmed up from its source. Second definition, noun, which is how we're using it. An act or instance of flowing or heaping up abundantly, a surge, the whelm of the tide. The correct amount of whelm. Now I know I've actually been using a real word. <laughs> That's great. Kim, thank you. And and it's so, and it's all about the our thoughts about it, right? It's it's uh, was the old saying, uh, reality isn't as it is, it's as we are, as we are, right? All that emotion, all of that um, deliberating with ourselves, all of our evaluations and considerations and the Q and A and the maybe, 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 oh my goodness, imperfect and done beats perfect and not done. How liberating that is if we could just get out of our own way. And we can, and no, it's not easy. And that's why we get together here every day, right? We get to see people doing it, right? Perfectly, no, done, yes, right? And then we can correct, we can optimize. Thank you, my friend and, and all my friends. Here. Thank you so much for... What a great way to start the week. Now, I guess the question is, how are we going to finish the week? So you got four and a half days, right? If you're just counting Monday through Friday to do something spectacular. Yes, to make a spectacle of yourself, right? Let's do that. Uh, Evelyn's going to help us do that in a couple hours. Uh, be on our e-commerce work group with Evelyn Melendez. She also has something in our Facebook group uh that you can participate in so go there and then i'm going to be back with you all here tonight at 9 p.m eastern for three more chapters of the richest man in babylon by george clayson if you go into our member site you can find a link to the book you just go to amazon and you may even be able to, to find a, a free copy somewhere it was written in 1926 so it is out of copyright but i am reading the one that i linked you to in the member site so if you want to follow along with my kindle version that would be the where the place to go. Are we done? I think we are done. All right, my friends, I'll see you all again real soon. Make it a great day.